All stay healthy and safe. Being aware of carbon monoxide dangers in this time of year, it's something we really have to think about. Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor is a toxicologist at Hartford Hospital. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So thank you for coming in. Uh, this is really, really important for us to talk about. People think, oh, I've got a smoke detector. I'm good. I mean, that's super important. But carbon monoxide's a different thing. Right, and it's just as important and it's dangerous because you can't see it, you can't smell it, and you can't taste it. So it's a silent killer and it's really hard to detect. What are some things that uh, can cause it to come into our homes? So a lot of things that we have in our homes can cause carbon monoxide poisoning. Anything that burns fuel, so anything that uses gasoline, propane, kerosene, um, wood burning fireplaces, cars, any of those things will generate carbon monoxide. So and it's in everyone's home. Right, and that's why, you know, we really say at this time of year, those are things you're probably going to use more. So if you have those things and you don't have a detector uh, and you're kind of winging it, but you're starting to feel maybe a little bit woozy, that's one of the symptoms. What are some other uh, signs that perhaps there is carbon monoxide in the home and it's getting to you? Right. So again, you can't see it and you can't smell it. So you have to go based on your symptoms. And the more mild symptoms Symptoms are things like a headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness. Those are the general kind of flu-like symptoms that people think of. But when you get more seriously ill from carbon monoxide, you can get, you can pass out, you can have trouble walking, trouble talking, be very confused. And that's almost when it's too late. You want to catch the poisoning in its earlier symptoms, if at all possible. And so let's talk about uh, once it gets to that point. Often, you know, people might hear this term tossed around a hyperbaric chamber. Um, that is something that people who are suffering on the serious end of, of CO2 poisoning, or CO poisoning um, are, are exposed to at the hospital. What is that? Right, so the patients with the milder symptoms can be treated with oxygen with a face mask, usually in the ER setting. Um, at Hartford Hospital, we take the patients that have the more severe symptoms, like the people that pass out, have confusion, trouble walking, and we put them in our hyperbaric chamber. And all that really is, is it looks like a submarine, and you, you go in there and you sit for two hours and breathe oxygen under pressure, and it helps get and rid of helps. the CO. Mm -hmm. For less uh, serious side effects and symptoms, you really need to get out of the house is the first thing you need to do, right? People might think, okay, I'll open the windows, I'll get rid of it, but the problem is you need to know the source of it, because you close those windows again, it's going to go right back in. Right. Anytime you have a CO exposure, you have to find out what the source is, because if you don't fix the source, you're going to have the poisoning all over again. So if you have a CO detector and the alarm goes off, get out of the house right away, move into fresh air, and call 911. Okay, so remember that, call 911, because I was thinking, oh, that's probably a little extreme, but no, you say you should call 911. It's at that level. Show them the, uh, let's, let's show viewers the uh, detector here. I have one of these in my home and it's just peace of mind. It's, it's really good to have. They're not a ton of money, like 20 bucks or so. Right. So about the same as a smoke detector um, and it, we'll get a close-up of that just so folks can see it. Now, uh, one thing you should point out if you do have when you think, oh, I'm covered, they have a shelf life. I didn't know that. They do. So if you look on the back of this one, for example, this one was made in August of, two th or October of 2007. They last about seven years and at that moment, they, they'll expect fire and they'll actually start to beep at you with an error message and you have to replace them at that time. The sensor is actually what gives out over time. And super important, plug it in, but also make sure it's got batteries because the time you're probably going to use it is during a storm when chances are you might have lost uh, power. So make sure both are up and running, right? Right. So these all have battery backup and it takes a nine volt battery and you put it in and that way if the power goes out, the detector still works. Great, great advice. Thank you so much and make sure you get on that today. All right. Thank thanks.